this is a water moccasin, Louisiana water moccasin. One of two deadly snakes that we, we have that are native here. This is what Six Flags has turned into, a home for venomous snakes. <laughs> He's looking right at you. He struck at me once. <laughs> wow. So we let him go now? Yeah. I'm going to let him go right over here. He was right in the middle of the walkway. And we're just walking around with those guys? Oh, yep. yeah, they're everywhere. They're everywhere, too. That one will kill you. <laughs> that was fun. Ah. I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana. This city, more than most, has had to rebuild itself many times. And through that, it has a strong DIY ethic. And I really respect that. I feel like as a skateboarder, I can relate to the rebuilding because a lot of times we'll build our own skate parks in abandoned spaces, kind of like this one. And either the property owner or the city or whoever will come through and tear it out. So I can understand that drive to just keep moving and rebuild. A lot of people know about Katrina, which happened about 10 years ago. But outside of Katrina, there's been tons of big storms here and floods. And uh, it seems to always stand up proud. I want to explore that. This spot's called Titty Bar because there's these cement things that look like bars, I guess. Skaters would obviously be drawn to a downtown city core and skate like brand new marble plazas and stuff like that. But you can't, you get kicked out. So you go places where no one is. You can do whatever you want, create whatever you want, make as much noise, be quiet. If you're looking for a skater, you know, for any reason, go to an abandoned slab. You'll find them, or her, or they. Downriver from the city, in the Ninth Ward, there's a lot of abandoned slabs. I found some deserted concrete and a crew of skaters in no time. Oh, yeah, Brunel. <laughs> it's a pretty rough spot. These kids are really into skating, and it sounds like they have a bunch of other friends that are, but they don't really have anywhere to do it. So they come to places like this, which is really hard to skate. Yeah! just stops when you land. Let's go somewhere that was nice. safer. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Dorsey was born in New Orleans East. His family was forced out during Katrina, but eventually managed to move back two years later. What was it like to grow up in this neighborhood? When I first moved around here, I didn't really know anybody until like, I came off the block, yeah. met some kids. I wasn't really into skateboarding. We used to like play football, basketball, mm -hmm. play it, tag, yeah. Yeah. and I started skating. Then I seen some guys like doing some tricks. I was like, they can do that on here. <laughs> like, I want to learn this. Is there anywhere to go or anything to do around here for young people? 
No, not at all. There's really nothing to do. We don't have like skating rings or bowling alleys or movies. All that got torn down. Like the storm wiped out the movies, the mall. We had a Six Flags, but that's done. And the city's not doing nothing for the East. It's just crazy. Really? So like your all your amenities were wiped out with the storm? Yeah. And nothing's been done about that for what, 10 years now? 10 years, basically. Do you think it's important for people to take things into their own hands and sort of make their own places for fun? Yeah, but it's like really hard to do that because like we built like a DIY spot and like the train company like tore it down. Oh, really? It's too close to the train track. But then we built like further out, so we had to deal with the city property. Right. And then they tore it down. Struggling with poverty and violence since the 80s, seemingly ignored post-Katrina, New Orleans East has barely bounced back. New Orleans has been known for like, crime and stuff, mm -hmm. but that's just building off of that. Like, there's really nothing, like, nothing to do. Like, right. that's why kids are always in the streets, like, doing, like, horrible things. Right, because like, they're just lost. Yeah. When kids get in the streets, it's, like, real bad. Like, I feel like we have more, like, teen violence than anything in the city because, once again, there's nothing to do. And, like, one of my friends, I used to go to school with him, he was supposed to graduate with us, but he just got killed, like, but two weeks ago, and like, and that's like that first friend I grew up with, I went to school with that died, it's like the fifth one. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, it's, it's like, I wouldn't say you get used to it, but it's still crazy, like, like I just laugh with this guy and like. This is life in Lou's neighborhood. You're surrounded by loss and abandonment. The vacant lots and empty concrete slabs become places to fight boredom. But it wasn't always this desolate here. New Orleans East used to be home to the most happening spot in the city. The abandoned Six Flags Amusement Park, resting in pieces since 2005. We're driving into the swamp. I mean, Six Flags. Wow, this is a full on swamp. Stinks. This Six Flags amusement park, this was abandoned after Katrina. There was too much flooding and damage for it to be saved. I'm assuming there's some pumps that pump out this water that are no longer on. And now it's just flooding again. Apparently, there's a whole lot of wildlife that live here, too. I feel like I'm on safari. <laughs> I was told it's not safe to go into the old Six Flags alone, so I recruited my own personal security outfit. This is a frog grabber, frog gig. Grab frogs with it. Works on snakes, works on anything, basically. <laughs> Reed Turgeon and Nick Baum used to hang out here as kids. These days, they work in pest control. So you're gonna be our uh, animal protection squad? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've heard they've got a lot of pigs in here. Wild boars. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought yeah. you just meant like pigs. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> These are a little crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there's boars in here? Boars, gators, uh, turtle, any, everything. Snakes. That's wild. Wild turtle. It's kind of like a wildlife refuge in here. Got what you need? Yeah, this is all I need. And I got the, the gun, yeah, 9 millimeter Caltech. Yeah, this will put a pig down. It'll scare him away, at least. Yeah. You guys used to come here as kids? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, as kids, we came here. I, I remember my first trip, I came here with my uncle and my cousins. Yeah. And I didn't have any fun because it was too crowded. We didn't get to ride any yeah, of the rides. That's the worst. This was crazy back then. It's a shame. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, this is just nuts, seeing all this the way it is. Man, people have really ransacked this I place. I don't even know if like Katrina did a lot of this. It's like, yeah. <laughs> this is man-made you know disaster. <laughs> yeah. Originally called Jazzland, 
This park opened in 2000. Struggling financially, it was sold to Six Flags in 2002. Although in theory, the park was structurally built to withstand storms, it didn't. Now, it's being swallowed by the Louisiana wilderness. So this wasn't built to look like a swamp? No, 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 no this is all land. That's wood. That's probably rotten. Yeah. Do you guys fail to see the whole park from right here? Can't see anything now. No. It's all overgrown. All these trees and stuff grew since Katrina. I mean, this is what Katrina did. Yeah. You can see the actual damage of what a storm can do. They built it pretty well. You know? yeah. Usually these are like just crappy facades. I mean, they, they put all this money. You'd see all the metal handrails, all this money, they, and they just left, just dropped it. There's so. been plans to turn this into a resort and stuff like that, and people put in bids and this and that, and it's just people don't want to put their money into something that needs this much upkeep. Yeah. You know, whenever you were here, it was just all sunshine and yeah, everything. Yeah, vibrant. Now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's ghost town. This ghost is town. Big squirt. Big squirt official, official souvenir. souvenir. There you <laughs> go. Souvenir from the Six Flags. <laughs> That's a cool pin, actually. There's the SpongeBob ride. That was sick. SpongeBob had his own ride here? Yeah, it was a movie theater, and the seats would literally like lift up and move around and stuff. Oh, so they you're would on lift this up. ride that moves and yep. stuff. And then the screen would be right there. Yeah. Man, this is so cool. Do you think the water was in here from the yeah. flood? Yeah, usually when we got houses, we got it up to about a foot above the uh, where the water actually went. Like so it looks line. like, I mean, it, it got to be about, you know, eight, 10 feet in really? here, it looks like. I mean. This could have been all underwater. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this was possibly all underwater. The entire what place. You... Looks like it's about to happen again. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Here's our average. <laughs> this all is right. our daily <laughs> storm. Here we go. This literally happens every day here. In the summers. Yeah. Every day. Feels good. Yeah. It's like air conditioning. It is condition. nice and cool. Yeah, right after the storm, it's going to be uh... nice and steamy. On days like this, when it's really hot and rainy, I'm sure there are a lot of kids in New Orleans that are missing the SpongeBob experience. What used to be the Six Flags New Orleans closed down over a decade ago from the storm of all storms. Much of the city has fixed itself up, but this massive playground has become a swampy jungle. And the people who used to play here have been replaced by other creatures. Look, alligator. Oh, right there. Swimming right for us. I see some sort of a tail moving. Yeah, that's a gator. Yeah. See his nose? Yeah. How close do you think he'll get? He'll come he'll right come up to us, up probably. Close. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Look, he's coming right for, for us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's about that a six guy. footer. No, about no, a four or five footer. You can just see his whole side profile now. When their tail and their whole body comes out of the water, it's a dominance thing. They're telling uh, us this is their, like, okay. stayed up away from us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's definitely more in here, too. The big ones don't show their face during the day. Because they got him in here. They have bigger ones, for sure. This is your typical crawfish we have down here. Well, Reed said he's going to feed it to an alligator. I don't see it happening, but we'll see. <laughs> it's on top of his nose. There you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, there he goes. He got the head in his mouth, man. Oh, crunch. Oh, crunch, crunch time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> New Orleans East, strong. we're looking at alligators. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> we're in the city looking at alligators. Yeah. That is nuts. But people didn't come here to bump into gators. They came here to bump into each other. Bumper cars. Wow. This was a popular ride. How does it feel to be here now after it's shut? It's strange. Yeah. It's definitely like eerie. Like, you, yeah. you're used to having all these people around and it's being been loud so and too, yeah. having fun. And then it's like a ghost town. This is the effects of, uh, of Katrina. Yeah. And Rita. And Rita. And we're yep. still feeling it. You know, 10, so, 11 years later? Yeah. 
Still. And there's nothing like this around anymore for the kids. Nothing. No, nothing Absolutely to do, nothing. really, for, for anybody, really, around right. here. I guess the closest place is Baton Rouge, and that's Blue yeah, Bayou. Yeah, Blue Bayou, the, the water park, and that's an hour and a half away. Yeah. You right. know, so. so, I mean, yeah, this was the one cool thing to do, and it, it just petered out. What do people do around here now that this place is gone? I mean, I tell you the truth, I don't really know. There's really nothing. There's not much of a kid environment in no. New Orleans anymore, huh. not at all. All these kids that were tagging were probably grew up coming to this park. Yeah, yeah they yeah, grew probably. up here. <laughs> and then <laughs> it stopped and they still wanted to come. So yeah. they still I come see here. that a lot. Like people keep going back to where they had fun even though it's abandoned. Yeah. yeah. Like keep the memories going. Oh yeah, this is bringing back a lot of memories. Yeah. Feels like <laughs> Jurassic Park. <laughs> Yeah, he's pretty deep in there. Can we get through there? That way might be better. This one got cut, so you can actually fit through here. Look at that swamp. They gotta call their landscaper to come through. Yeah, trim some of this shit. <laughs> this animal I found. Man, this is cool. It's got the whole freaking setup. This is sick. I'm horrified of heights. <laughs> deathly afraid. The only thing I'm deathly afraid of is heights. You wanna go first or me? No. I do not think I'm gonna make it. It's just a staircase. Yeah, seriously. All right. Hey, you just keep going up. Oh my god. I'm already getting scared. Oh my god, this is horrifying already. Yeah, f this. Coming back down. Too afraid. <laughs> I do not like heights. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Before the flood, the sights and sounds from up here were a lot different. It was crowded and it was loud. People brought life to this place. Now, wildlife run the show. You can see the gators from up here. One there, there's one that was right over here. Yeah, this should be all cleared out. And they have two big ramps right here. And everybody sit and watch people do all these ski jumps and all. Yeah. That is cool. <laughs> Everywhere around here, if you're looking down, is all swamp. They built this entire thing on swamp. And if you just look, you can see all this is all swamp down here. Looking at the view from up here, thinking of all the storms this place has endured, I can't help but wonder, is there hope for New Orleans East? On your way out here, you saw all the abandoned businesses yeah. and malls yeah, and stuff like that. People don't want to put their money in, into New Orleans East anymore. It's sinking. I mean, we're still at half of what we used to be yeah. in New Orleans. We used to have 450,000, 500,000 people yeah. here. We're only at 250,000 about. No way. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's drastically reduced the numbers in New Orleans. It's right. still a ghost town in most of New Orleans East. A decade later. Oh, yep. yeah, it's wild. It is wild, and it's becoming wilder. With every passing year, this amusement park sinks further into the swamp. Once filled with the music of joy, now it's just another verse of the Katrina Blues. What do you do when the biggest playground your city ever had turns into a swamp? Well, you could always go find the crack foundation of a demolished mental institution and make it your own. I'm at this slab spot where some skaters have built some obstacles. They're carrying in some supplies to build some more. And I'm gonna help them, but I won't help them carry it because they gotta learn. <laughs> oh. Any town will have a slab that you could do this at, but you gotta keep it real quiet. Shh. This feature has been taken over by the jungle here. You'd be going this way, so this would represent the crumbling future, whereas the past is more solid. And there's some sort of Sanskrit written on there. It's actually a fascinating piece. 
I was invited here by a skate crew that called themselves Forever Dumb. So these are the local dudes that have built this spot up already, and uh, they're about to build a new ledge. So they went and got some supplies, like some quick drying concrete and uh, some trowels and some buckets, and they're just gonna take it upon themselves to make a skate spot. Why do you feel like you have to do this, build stuff here? Because I don't have anything else, and I, what, like, have you ever skated around New Orleans? A little bit. It's not ideal for skateboarding. Right. Really. Do you know what used to be here before? So this is actually an asylum, like an institute. Oh, like, really? Yeah. In the 80s, it was an institute, a mental asylum. And then uh, in the 90s, I believe, it got torn down. Okay. And actually, like, a lot of OG skaters, like, used to skate this spot in the 90s. Oh, really? So, like, a couple of OG skaters, like, still know about this spot. That's and like, that yes, yeah. legend has it somewhere legend in the has. forest. <laughs> There's, There's a pool a... in there somewhere. And I believe it too, like, yeah. I... And they filled it up it with dirt. Like oh, really? Yeah. Get a weed whacker. Yeah. I gotta add a little bit of my sweat to this mix. Yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be a really good spot. It's just gonna take a while to dry. One million years I said, the world. Hung BCRs off of naked girls, now I'm under. Both again, must be no one's friend. Shouldn't be too bad. Over when you die. It's not good to pour Crete in the rain, I think, <laughs> right? I don't believe so. So we got the tarp though, everything will be okay. Yeah. Hopefully. You guys like thunder? <laughs> not too much, but you know, we gotta get used to it living out here. <laughs> I can sleep through it, that's for sure. Nice. Sometimes it becomes hard to distinguish the, the thunder from the gunshots. <laughs> Is that real? Yeah, that's, that's some real talk. Wow. You guys ever have any trouble here when you're building? Uh, actually, yeah, we've been robbed twice. Yeah. Twice? Yeah. I think it was, a, it was a female and a male, and they just ran out of the bushes, basically. One with a ski mask on, one with, like, I think a 22, like, just a little revolver. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just asking us for our wallets and whatnot. We were just like, yeah, take it, just yeah. leave us alone. But uh, the second time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so. Uh, Dudes came up and sat down while we were skating. So they pulled their gun out. Yeah. <laughs> they pulled their gun out. They told us to get on the ground after they pointed the gun at us. Yeah. Emptied our pockets, took the car and left. But. We were able to catch them because my friend had his iPad under the seat. They couldn't find it. They were able to track it. Find my got, iPad. Yep, yeah. find my iPhone. Tracking device. This is a lake now. This is wakeboarding. Skate spots like the one Forever Dumb is building on this concrete wasteland don't just happen out of nowhere. They're inspired by places like New Orleans' best known DIY park. Built from scratch under a sketchy overpass, Parasite Skate Park took years to become what it is today. Parasite DIY skate park. It's underneath the freeway. Formerly just like empty space that nobody used for anything. Hey, what's up, man? Adam? Adam, man. Rick. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. 
Adam had his eye on this spot for a long time. He saw potential in an unused, underappreciated space, and he did something about it. I had always had the idea to build underneath here. I kept thinking, you know, let's get under the bridge. It's hot as hell here. Let's, you know, get some shade. I borrowed a trailer. I borrowed a truck. I got my little crew together, and that's what came out of it. So that was the first spot, and then you built the spine. Yeah, we did the spine. Which is the funnest spine in the world. Yeah. Dude, I'm so stoked you like it. Yeah. Man. It's rad. So good. Normally, DIY parks are illegal, and they get torn out. But this one is now a recognized city skate park. Like, how did that happen? We knew the area was a rough area, so obviously stuff like that, you got a better chance for it to be able to stay. The use of this space before was, it was drug activity. You know, it was heavy, heavy, you know, negative stuff for the city. So we turned it into a healthy zone. How do the people in the area here take to this being here? I think at first, you know, people were weary. They obviously wanted to know what was going on. And once they realized that we were not out here destroying anything, we were out here building something to help the community, they got involved. Not all of them were super stoked, but the, the majority of them were on side with us. And the gentleman that lives on the corner, he let us use his electricity and his water. And if it was not from him, we, we wouldn't be here. Adam wants to introduce me to Mr. Cage. He lives on the corner across the street from the skate park, and he really helped them build it. What did you think when you first started seeing these guys over here? The first attitude I, take, I took was, oh, Lord, here comes some more. And then I found out one day, it took one day to find out they wasn't some more. And they were really, really different. Mr. Cage, uh, uh -huh. I'm so thankful to you, man. <laughs> I mean, the running water and electricity that you let us use for years. Yeah. And never would take a penny from us. I mean, the place would not exist, man, if it wasn't for you. Right. You know how much we both right. want everybody to have a happy, fun place. And right. You are a big part of that, man. <laughs> you are a adopted New Orleans skateboarder, yes, man. Sir. You helped us out that much. Yes, sir, man, I tell you. <laughs> And I, I was adopted by somebody who knew what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that in skateboarding that skaters are drawn to abandoned places? Yeah, I mean, you're looking out the window when you're driving places. I mean, even as a kid, and you see the world different. It's a beautiful thing, you know? We're engineers and architects in our minds from the early days of skating. And uh, I'll say it to everybody, man, don't ever be scared to get dirty. It's never gonna be perfect when you first do it. But sooner or later, you're going to make something, and you'll be proud of it, and you're going to help the community yeah. out, too. You did a great job, man. It's a beautiful place. <laughs> hey, can I get a call? I can barely think right now. It's so hot. Reclaimed overpasses, derelict amusement parks, empty concrete slabs. There's obviously a lot more to New Orleans than that. To see more, I reached out to a guy who's not your typical tour guide. I'm meeting up with local punk rocker D. Slet from the Sluts. I'm gonna check out the city. So where should we start? Let's take a ride, all right? We're, uh, we're gonna pull out of the, the Bywater up to the French Quarter. Where you can see just beautiful architecture, too. Yeah, New Orleans here. is just beautiful. It seems like it has such an appreciation for style and beauty. And I think you've gotten a greater appreciation since the big change, you right. know? And so you can see they've redone these streets and where all this was empty seven years ago. And that brought people back in here and... Yeah, you know, it's, it's what you do if you want to be here. If you want a freaking handout, go somewhere else. You know, we all get kicked down, and life's all about new beginnings, right? Yeah. That is the longest bridge in the world. Right Holy there. shit. That's you can't see where it is. Serious curvature of the world. That's what my brother always used yeah. to say. <laughs> Yeah. 
Dee took me to a part of the waterfront that's in a lot better shape than it was a few years ago. For him, it's a place that stirs up strong memories of the chaos in New Orleans during the big storm. This harbor here is full of sailboats. After Katrina, they were all stacked up on top of each other on one end. Wow. When we evacuated, we really didn't want to leave, but we left across that bridge there. And when we left, the waves were hitting the side of the bridge. And we had to run our windshield wipers because the water from the lake was up really high. We were the last, supposedly, we were the last little convoy that went across the bridge and then they closed. Were you worried that you could possibly get washed off? No. No. Wasn't I was that pissed bad. off that we were leaving. Yeah. I'm still pissed off that we left. <laughs> Do a lot of people here have that mentality, like I'm not leaving? A lot of people. Yeah. People that weren't allowed, that wanted to come back, that weren't allowed to, will never leave again. Mm -hmm. And then other people that say, I don't care. Seems like like out here, there's a lot of good times, right? Absolutely. And that's the, the with greatest. The good times, you gotta have the bad that's times. That's correct. That's right. If you, if it was, uh, it's like a heartbeat. It's like the little machine in the hospital, you know. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I've looked at too many of them. But they, they, the, the good one, it's going like that, you know. It's going up and down, but it's really bad when it's just like this straight line. It's just like life, right? Yeah. It's living. It takes ups and downs. I think that means a lot to me, because I always feel like my, I'm always like that with everything. And that's, I think that's where we learn. Yeah. Talking with people like Dee, you get the feeling it'll take a lot more than a natural disaster to make New Orleans flatline. New Orleans is mostly built on a swamp. And you can't understand the swamp until you go to the bayou that feeds it. I'm in Lafitte on the bayou, just outside New Orleans. And this is where Deeslet lives. Deeslet was so proud of Lafitte and how they came back from Katrina, you know, all on their own, that uh, I wanted to come out here and have a look for myself. We're in the swamp, the jungle, and a farm all at once. It seems like what you'd expect in the bayou. What's up, buddy? Good day, Mr. Slut. Who are you? Hey, that's Sheba. Hey, good to see you. All right, good to see you, brother. Right. Thanks for coming down, Thanks man. Thanks for having us. You bet. Hey, Sheba. So this Hi. is uh, this Hi. is my paradise. Yeah. Pretty this incredible. This is my retirement house. Yeah. <laughs> you want to come inside for a minute? Yeah. Come on in. Right here. Oh, the sluts. Yeah, we probably ate a quaalude before riding it, and you, uh, we were yeah. definitely in with the pudding man. Who's the pudding man? Bill Cosby. You know the oh, old okay. quaalude man. Right. right. I get it. <laughs> this is one of the neighbors, Al. Oh, this is the slut mobile? This is the slut mobile. You got in there, Dean? Sprite. You drink a lot of soda, I'm a little concerned. Yeah. It's like too much oh. sugar. It's good for you. It is sugar free stuff. Oh, it's <laughs> D. Slut has been traveling these waters since he was a kid. He knows them like Louisiana knows flooding. How common is flooding in this area right here? We flooded three times this year from south wind. Just the wind okay, will flood it. Just the wind will flood it. Wind for four or five days in a row, good 30 mile an hour wind. So this water here would go over these banks and then that would flood your right. land? And so these kind of people, they aren't leaving. Right. But I mean, my 
The point is, where the hell are you going to go that something bad, shit doesn't happen, you know? Right. It's, uh, I don't think they got that place. Move on to different kind of troubles. Boutiques, buy you restaurant, people. It doesn't get better than this. So what's the story with Bootees? We're now down in Lower Lafitte, which okay. floods a lot more than Upper Lafitte. Katie and their family, they have mortgaged their homes. They have basically put everything at risk to try and keep this restaurant open because she employs four or five people here. These are people who she feels great loyalty from mm -hmm. and feels that this is something that's important to our community mm -hmm. and a community that's just slowly dying and, and a lot of people kicking and screaming that don't want it to happen. Hello, Katie. Hi, Katie, Katie, this is my friend Rick. Hi, I'm Pleasure. Katie. Pleasure to meet you. Katie is one of my Bayou heroes <laughs> right here. Oh, this is nice up here. Mm-hmm. It's really nice. It was a nice area. We had a cover, and yeah. people used to come up here and sit and eat. Mm -hmm. It was really nice. You could see the boats coming in with their catch all year round. You think one day you can maybe come back? Well, we've, we've um, thought about it. If we get investors, we probably could. Right. The economy right now is not at its best, so sure. we have to do what we can with what we have. <laughs> exactly, yeah. To make do. This restaurant has been flooded six times since you've been we, here? We have flooded and had damages six times. And rebuilt every time. And we have rebuilt and opened up every time. Right. Many people of the community left because they couldn't handle it anymore. Right, yeah. But I would never leave because this is my home. Right. And I feel it was worth the investment in my personal life and in this community. Mm -hmm. That's why you do it? And that's why we do it. For the, is it for the community? We don't walk off. Right. You know, it's for everyone. Wow for everyone. That's well, commendable. I would never move, even if the business would be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Personally, as a resident, I would never leave this community. This is my home. I understand. And this is where I'm gonna stay. Every time Katie's restaurant takes a beating, she builds it back up for the community. With the help of people from the community, like Dee Slut. Are they the greatest people or what? Huh? They're really sweet. Um, Y'all want to try and do some canals? Yeah, I want to do right, some canals. Right. Let's get out of the city here. Let's get out of town. Yeah. comes from a do-it-yourself-minded community that is resilient and supportive, which is exactly what it needs to be. These floods don't seem to be slowing down, and for Dee's paradise to survive, that same DIY ethic is vital. At a banged up, left for dead, abandoned hospital, the forever dumb crew are hard at work. Back at the ledge spot, it's cured, it's ready to skate, but we got all these puddles to clear out first. So we've enlisted some local skaters to help, and me. Spreading it out, sun will dry it up. Oh God. It's hard out here in New Orleans to be a skater. You're battling the heat, your voice. 
Usually when you go to a new city, you gravitate to the nicer part of town. But for this show, we've been going to the exact opposite of that. We've gone to the abandoned places, the rundown, poor neighborhoods. And from what I've learned, you'll find really interesting things there and meet really great people. Doing amazing things. This ledge is just a start for this place. Look, they got a table set up over there. They're gonna have a barbecue. <laughs> yeah, we're just here skating. We got the new ledge built. Gonna have a little crawfish boil. Oh, he got out the bag and I gave him some beer and uh, kind of just let him go loose, be free. We're gonna eat the rest though, but he can go. He's cool. Right now we're standing on the slab from a torn down mental institute. We're surrounded by abandoned buildings. And then all these kids just came here, cleaning it up. They're building obstacles to use and they're making this place a positive place again. It's called DIY, do it yourself. But nobody really does it by themselves. We're a community that's always stronger together. And if you're willing to put in the work, anywhere can be an amusement park.